Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at lines in three dimensions. Now, in the previous section, we actually looked at lines in two dimensions, and we saw that lines in two dimensions actually have three forms. They are the Cartesian form, the parametric form, and the vector form. And those forms are all related to each other. Now, what we want to do is we want to extend that to the three-dimensional case. And what we'll see is that, especially for the vector form of the line, it is going to be exactly the same as the two-dimensional case. So here you go. The concept again is going to be the same as two dimensions because we're going to have a resultant vector which is pointing to a point on the line is actually going to be a plus t times the b vector which is going to be the directional vector. Okay? So we have the position vector plus the scalar multiple of the directional vector which establishes the direction of the line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and try to rephrase that a little bit using different notation. And it's basically going to be the same, but at least we're going to be able to associate the position vector with the p vector and the directional vector with the d vector. Now, generally speaking, you're going to see it in this form, but I'm going to try to also use this form because it will keep in mind the two important vectors that we need in order to establish the vector equation of any line in three-dimensional or two-dimensional space. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and take a look at what that looked like in the parametric in the Cartesian form, then of course we know that r is going to be just an x, y, z. We know p is going to be p sub 1, p sub 2, p sub 3. And the vector d is going to be d sub 1, d sub 2, d sub 3. The parameter t stays the same as t. So if I go ahead and equate these, I know that the x component with respect to t is going to be p sub 1 plus t d sub 1 and onward for y sub t and z sub t. So there you go, this is what your parametric form of the line will look like. Now how do we go ahead and determine what the Cartesian form of the three-dimensional line looks like? And this is going to be a little bit different and something that you probably have never seen before. Now, as in the two-dimensional case, what we needed to do is we need to eliminate the parameter. And in the three-dimensional case, it's no different, except for this time, we actually have three equations as opposed to two. But if I was to go ahead and solve for t for each one of these different equations for the parametric form of a line, I come up with t being equal to x minus p sub 1 over d sub 1, it's also going to be equal to y, sub y minus p sub 2 over d sub 2, which is also going to be equal to z minus p sub 3 over d sub 3. And if I was to go ahead then and equate all of those because all of those are actually equal to the parameter t, I actually come up with the Cartesian form of a line in three-dimensional space. And that's what it would look like. Okay, so there you go. You have lines in three dimensions, the, the vector form, the parametric form, and the Cartesian form. Now what we also need to do is we need to go ahead and determine exactly how lines interact with each other. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're also going to talk about what angle those lines are actually intersecting. So let's go ahead and take a look at how two lines in interact if it's in two-dimensional or three-dimensional space. Now in the two-dimensional case, you're either going to have two lines that are going to intersect you're going to have them parallel, or you're going to have them right on top of each other, and we saw that that case is called coincident. Now, in the three-dimensional case, it's going to be exactly the same as those three, except for there's one more case, because you could actually have a line that is not parallel, but still doesn't intersect. And if you were to just go ahead and take two pencils and make sure that they're not pointing in the same direction, of course, those are not going to be parallel, they're not coincident, nor do they intersect. And because of that situation, we're going to have to name it and call it the skew situation. So two lines that are not parallel and do not intersect are called skewed lines. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and take a look at the angle that is created by the two lines, we're going to have to go ahead and make a certain case with respect to the skewed case because actually those lines don't interact. And so what we're going to say then is that if we were to go ahead and find the angle between two lines, we're going to actually say that that is actually going to be the angle that is created by the respective directional vectors. And remember that we said that so long as we take the directional vectors, when we put it into standard position, of course, then you're going to actually have an angle that is created, and then we can say that that is the angle by which the lines are actually interacting with each other. 
Okay, so there you go. We have lines in three dimension, the vector form, parametric form, Cartesian form, and then we know that two lines can intersect in these three or four ways in two or three dimensional space respectively. And if we want to go ahead and find the angle that is created by the two lines, then we look at the angle that is created by the respective directional vectors. Okay, and there you go. Let's see how we do with some of the problems and let's move on from there. Okay, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.